And we're rolling. We're rolling, we're rolling, we're rolling. Welcome back to the Jewelry Works Studio channel. My name is Yaku. That's a message on my iPhone, which I'm gonna ignore because you have clicked this link. Thank you for being here. Hopefully you've clicked this link because there's some interest in the topic that we're dealing with today. Plate construction to form. Because somebody commented asking to explain how you created the stencil for the under bezel of the sapphire ring. Link to the sapphire ring video in description, guys. That's exactly why we're making this video. We did a sapphire ring. It has a basket underneath the, 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 the top motive and somebody asked how to make that. Um, so today I'm going to be explaining how to take a flat plate and turn it into a form. I've got a drawing board, which is fairly old, so don't judge me. It's a rotting drawing board. And what I do with this is I clamp, you clamp the paper to it, and then you use various stencils and fine pencils to draw. I know that's old school, but that's the way I do it. Um, I, I know you can do this on computer as well, and sometimes I do go onto the computer, but just the simple, the simplicity of this particular project is much easier with the drawing board. So make sure you've got everything nicely clamped and that you're using sharp pencils when you want to create this form because you're going to be cutting out exactly on the lines and and you need to be as accurate as possible to get the best results let's, just, let's assume that we're working with a rectangular stone because it's simple to explain the previous ring was an octagon shape and the same rules apply but for this example to make it simple enough let's try and work with a rectangle on a rectangle obviously we've got a long and a short side and then a repetition of that I need to make sure that the measurements of the stone are taken to start off with. If I want the stone to lie right on top of the setting, I have to work with the exact measurements of the stone. If I wanted the stone to be seated inside so that I can use a bezel to fold over the stone, I need to go higher. I have to increase my height so the length needs to be longer. But for the purpose of this particular explanation, let's say the stone lies on top so that we can bring claws in and create a claw setting. This is more about how the setting is folded and how you can get a flat plate to become a three-dimensional shape. So let me carry on and explain to you exactly how we get there. Once you have the first length of the stone and the second length of the stone, you need to determine how deep the stone needs to be. Obviously, when the stone sits on top of a ring, let's call it a ring, it could be anything, but let's, let's say there's a ring, you need to consider once the stone's belly comes through to the bottom, that once you've rounded that setting, that it doesn't interfere or go higher or lower. Easy to do this by going slightly lower down. Make your setting, if, if, if you're going to be working with a three millimeter height, go down to five millimeter or six millimeters. Give yourself excess so that you can file and make sure that you've got that rounding considered at the bottom. So we have the side, we've got the other side. Those are the two measurements we need. We're gonna repeat the first side again and repeat the second side, then we've got a rectangle. We've got the height. Let's say we're working with about five millimeters here. And then the other thing to consider is an angle. Now, most of the punches are on around 17 and a half degree angle. So I've used the angle from the top line that I've created and I've drawn it down 17 degrees from this point to that point to meet at the bottom at a central point. So where those lines meet is my point I'm going to use as a reference point. Anything from here onwards, you're going to take a compass Put it onto the reference point and use it as a radius. Now a radius is obviously half of the circle, so you're going to pop it onto the circle. Top part of where your setting is ended, so your length, your original length that you spoke about, and you're going to turn your first circle. Once you've done that and you've gone sort of a three-quarter circle or a... a I suppose it depends on how many depends. sides and how big the stone is, but... It does indeed. Um, but you're going to be going well past a quarter, almost half a circle down and then a parallel one for your bottom edge that we've discussed. The bottom edge meaning that that's how high you want the setting to be. The bottom edge gets a parallel circle as well. So essentially it's like a guideline. We're, it we're becomes going to a be... guideline and I'll explain why because this actually creates the same angle as we're going around. We want that angle to be exactly the same so that when we fold it, it comes to a 3D shape. So once you've done your first line, and you've done your angles and you've got your height and you've taken your stone or your lines down to a, a common point and you've drawn your two parallel lines you then go to your second side of your stone you apply the second side on that circular radius that you've just made on the top you apply that same distance over there connect the two and where it ends continue that same line to your common point which will mean that once you spread it out like that, you have an exact same angle going around as you're going along. 
and then you repeat that with your last side as well. Once you've done this, you, you, you cut the piece of paper out that you've worked on. This is why it's so important to work with a fine pencil, maybe a 0.5 millimeter pencil. Make sure that it's nice and crisp because you're going to have to cut exactly on these lines or just past these lines so that you can preserve these lines. You've got to respect what you've drawn there. Make sure that you spend the time to make it as neat as possible. And then you cut through the lines which divides the sides. You cut through them, but not all the way through. You cut through them just as a reference. Now in a square or a rectangular setting, you can use a square file and cut through before about three quarters through this um, through the flat plate and then just fold it to create a 90 degree uh, corner. In my case, I like to take a saw blade and I'm doing it very cautiously, sticking exactly on that line. Remember, if your angle is incorrect, by the time you fold this, you're not gonna get the two parts to match. So you have to stick with the angle that you've just drawn. Technical drawing should be as accurate as possible. Really. Best to take your time with this step. The result just works out perfect if you follow these, these reasons. And another reason for doing this is a lot of the times the punches that you have don't go to the size that you need or the actual setting that you're talking about like on that sapphire ring i just made um, it, it was unique to the stone's dimensions so the stamp itself would have given me a form which would have been slightly different to what i was looking for so this is just a method of creating something slightly bigger i mean a punch is always so much easier but by cutting it out of flat plate plate construction is a sort of dying art so it's good to go back there and it's very rewarding once you've got it right i mean the mic could you put a reference of that folding yeah, we'll down do. on the metal that I've done on the previous video? Yes. Yeah, have a look at what we've done over here. You've gotten it folded down, it comes back to the point, you're soldering it, and that is, the, that is the way I've created that particular setting. Now we make these videos, obviously, dealing with all kinds of topics. There's manufacturing videos coming up. The next two are cool manufacturing videos, really cool rings we made that we'd like to share with you. But I do steer the channel with your comments. So because of this comment, because of this question, we don't want to skip over it. We want you to be a part of this community because you're helping us grow in what we're doing as well. Thank you so much once again for watching this video. If it's helped you, give us a thumbs up. If you've got any questions, as per usual, straight into the comments. Until next week, Sunday, we're on 1 GPM now, right? GMP. What? <laughs> we're on 1 GPM, GM. GMT, guys. GMT, 1 PM. 1 GMT, is it PM GMT? 1 PM GMT. 1 PM GMT. Yes. God, 1 PM GMP, we are. A GMT, Dad, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Next Sunday sometime the video will go up. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. We'll see you next week. Cheers. Rolling, 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 rolling. What? <laughs> <laughs> Only a few people will get that and we appreciate you.